Guys, it's just an MTG video, and it's a long video, but this is a deck that I really dive into. It beats Marty Vehicles, it beats Torrential Gearhulk, it beats Caesar's Hunger, and yes, it beats Zombies. So guys, I hope you enjoy the video. I go in-depth with this. Um, pretty big, I go in-depth, but just pay attention. Right around, um, I say minute two is when I really get involved into the deck. So guys, hopefully you like it, and um, enjoy it. Tell me what you think. Mitt Planeswalkers, and I just won the match. They just quit. That's ball game over. I mean, they killed all my creatures. So look at my creatures at my graveyard. Their deck targeted this. Um, I'm going to spend some time while they're dealing with their cyborg. But Tyler's Tracker is really good. It gives you card advantage. You know, Tomb Sifter, I cannot tell you how synergetic this is. You get a token, so when it comes into play, you get a 1-1 Kalos Aldrazi. Nothing special, but it's a 2-3 blocker. So it's out of shock range. You know, if they're going to use um, Harness Lightning, they have to use all their energy counters to kill it. Here's another thing. When another creature you control dies, you scry one. I have a video where somebody killed like 20 of my tokens. My spider tokens that were generated from, you know, this thing that I can never pronounce, which is, you know, Ishkana. Which she's really good is I actually have also a Planeswalker in here. Liliana, Death Majesty. You need to run these in here. It's one of the cheaper Planeswalkers on MTG. If you're doing it online, it's relatively cheaper. Thing becomes big and you can swing, so that's the reason why you want to have those in there, um, for those reasons. Um, so I'm gonna quit my docket and just kind of attack and swing. And again, um, it's just one of those things. So planeswalkers in these types of decks are really good, along with the constrictor. Also, run really, really view the decks and how you really view them. A lot of people will come out with making these decks and they are running them off of the same archetypes. Um, they're going to run black green counters, and it might be delirium based or solely um, counter based or energy based. And really, you need to compass all three. So I have, uh, I'm going to put some of these up maybe too. I have Rishkar, um, Renegade. When Rishkar enters the battlefield, now guys, don't dislike the video for the quality of the imagery that I'm, the video I'm shooting. Like the video for the content. If you dislike the video, tell me why, but. Don't dislike it. I'm, I'm, I understand when I see something, I just film it. I do everything raw um, because it's real. I'm doing things in real time, and I'm just showing you things. I also like to know, tell you that this deck beats Mardu Vehicles. It actually can whip it pretty good. And I'll show you why it's so important, because my sideboard can actually make this deck and turn this into another completely different type of deck. But, and I've played against this, this deck has a roughly a high win rate. In versus competitive decks, it definitely stands well above 50% in its win rate versus decks that are highly competitive. I mean, versus Seedless Hunger decks, versus Control decks, I mean, versus green, red, some type of, you know, it beats aggro decks because it's just so fast, and I'm going to show you why. So here's R Rishnar. If you're not reading it, when there's a battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter. On each up to two target creature, so plus one, plus one counter... So yeah, we're playing in the counter trend. But here's a great thing. Each creature you control with a counter on it has add one to your mana pool. So we can do, like, realistically, you know, four constrictors. So we're running, you know, um, here, let me kind of view it for you. So turn two, you know, um, we can run the constrictor. And then basically, turn three, we can run Rishnar. Okay, I'm not producing it right. Rishkar. Okay. And what this does, besides give you epilepsy from viewing the video, sorry, but what this does, this what this combo does, is that it gives you turn three a four five constrictor because remember, constrictor is like a hardening scale except it's a creature, so it adds plus one plus one. So if you add a plus one plus one counter, it's going to be a plus two plus two counter. So that two three constrictor turns into a four five, and then your Rishkar is going to turn into a three three creature. And you're going to be able to swing with a 4-5 on turn 3. Then on turn 4, you can actually drop Gear Hulk. And I'll show you that because you can actually produce more mana. And you can still block and swing with another creature um, if you have to. Because you can get 4 mana by simply tapping the 4 mana that you have on turn 4. And tapping one of your creatures for a green. Or simply if you're running mana short. Like, if you're just, you know, MTG Online, and tell me what you guys think about this. MTG Online, the land. Sometimes it feels like you get infinite land, and sometimes it feels like you get nothing. 
But anyway, if you're running deck short, you know, what this really does is it really, really helps accelerate your deck, even when you're getting, quote-unquote, mana screwed. Well, and here's one of this. It's Rydia's Gearhawk, so we're just going to go right up here because it has better quality. Um, it's Trample, so it's a 3 colorless, 2 green, so pretty good. And um, when Gearhawk enters the battlefield, distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among on target creatures you control. Do you see how fast that is? So turn 3, we're swinging with a 4-5 Constrictor. Turn 4, we have a 4-5, a 3-3, three, three. they can produce mana, we can drop Gear Hulk. Gear Hulk can then put 4, technically, plus 1, plus 1 counters, but it's going to get buffed up by 1 because we have the Constrictor. So literally, we could have literally a 7-8 uh, a creature... A 5-6 creature and a 6-6 six, six creature turn 4. And you're able to swing. I mean, just, just I just want you to understand that for a second. The pressure that puts on your opponent. And you're just starting. This is just one part of your deck. I mean, this is just one side of it. it. There's so much more to this deck. And I'll show you the other part of this deck, which people are not doing in these black-green decks, which is totally just they're bypassing. This is why this deck is so strong. I run black green counters. I have, a, I have the original archetype of this deck. This deck wins a lot more. Especially versus Gideon Planeswalkers. You guys call it Mardu Vehicles. I don't know why. Somebody explain that to me why it's called Mar Mardu Vehicles or Mardu Vehicles. Please explain that to me in the comment section. Why? I don't know. I, I played Magic basically to get my history. I played a long time ago. I was like a little kid. And like literally it would say tap the land, and I'd physically tap the mana. I'd physically tap the mana. And people had explained to me, I was so little when I started playing Magic, I played way back in the day, that people actually had to explain to me, they're like, no, like, you have to, I'm like, and they're like, you have to tap, I'm like, I'm, I'm tapping it, I'm tapping it. And they had, to, so I, then they had to explain to me, you have to turn it. So then I'd physically turn it. I was so young, I was like, Seven years, maybe not even, I don't know, was I seven yet? I don't even think I was seven yet. And I was playing with, like, people that were, like, 12, 13 years old at the time, you know. And they really uh, helped me teach a game. I played in, uh, I don't know if they had, in arena tournaments. I played with some of the top three people in the state that I that I actually would play. Um, ranked number three in the state. And we would just all get together and play in the same car shop. We all developed. So the, the ability to see the same cards and quit building the same decks but build variants is called strategy. Let me just simply put that. It's called strategy. Just grabbing something and go, oh, it's black-green counters. Let's stick with everything counters. You know, back in the day, we didn't have decks that were, you know, all zombie decks. We didn't have decks that were all human decks. We didn't have decks that were all... You had to play with strategy. One, you can see one card and visualize it in multitude of decks. Not just one deck, not just one archetype. You could see it in many, many different decks. That's why cards like Force of Will, you know, weren't really that powerful. Dark Rituals really weren't that powerful. I'll explain that um, in a minute. But anyway, um, Vernus Gearhawk, so the card explains itself. That's really one part of the deck. I'll show you the other part of the deck. All right, and I might put pictures of the cards um, up, but here's the other part of the deck. So this creature, um, here, let's, let's stick with this, is, I cannot pronounce this creature's name, Ishkana, Graf Widow, so we'll just say Graf Widow. Does that make sense? All right. So it's a 3, 4, 5 creature, you know, it has reach. Um, here's the important part, Delirium. When, uh, we'll just call it the Giant Spider, enters the battlefield, if there are four or more cards among cards in your graveyard, create three one two green spider creature tokens with reach. And ra rarely do you ever use this ability, but if you want to, it's an added bonus, you know, the game can come down to two life or three life. Well, target opponent loses one life for each spider you control, so it's a three five. I have to mention it's a legendary creature. We're only running two of this in our deck because delirium is not something that we're really heck bent on. But we're certainly willing to keep this in main deck. I don't think this should be a sideboard at all. I made the mistake of running the sideboard in my original black-green counters deck until I put Liliana's 
death majesty into the deck. And then I said, whoa, wait a minute. This is one hell... Heck combo. Almost swore there. You can literally pitch this into your graveyard through Liana's death majesty and get it back. Or if somebody kills it, just get it back. Boom. You have a 3-5 that can block. And you have three one two creatures that can block flying. So, I mean, and a 3-5 is not bad, you know? And so, we're going to run two of these in the deck. That's what you really want to do. Um, to make room for this, we're only running three uh, Virtus Gearhawks. That's all we're running. And so, I'm going to show you Liliana's Death Majesty. And for people that really don't pay attention to the card, that really, really should. Okay, Liliana's Death Majesty. Um, she does have some sexy art. She's eating a grape. Um, maybe I'll show some of the cards. And tell me, guys, tell me what you think, you know. Um, so you create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. You know, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. So you get a zombie token. We're not zombie-themed here. But here's the really cool part about this. So it comes in with a royalty of 5. So I know a lot of people, they diss this on pre-release. They're like, well, Liliana's Death Majesty, it's going to be one of those plain walkers that are, you know, 5 casting cost, and it's horrible. It's 3 colors and 2 black. It's perfect for multicolor, especially when you're only playing 2 colors. It's perfect for the deck. It gives you an instantaneous blocker. So among the creatures that we're running, we're running even more creatures because look at the theme of our our planeswalkers. Nisa produces creatures. Liliana Death Majesty produces creatures. Guess what? Ob Nixless, we're running one of that. Destroys creatures, gives you card advantage. Then we're running also Liliana's Last Hope. That also gets you creatures back from your graveyard, helps you with delirium, you know, also can create zombies and just add another zombie. This can kind of be a zombie deck if you want to view it that way. Um, it's come down to that sometimes, where I have, like, zombies out like crazy, because Liliana's Last Hope, she's protected. But anyway, I want you to show you this card. What's really great about this is you can come out, you know, you could turn this, in this deck, you could possibly pump this out, you know, turn, if everything comes out right, you can pump this out turn four very easily. Um, but it's, it's really, it's a second effect. So it comes down, say, turn five, you know, let's say we're just, and you create the 2-2 two, two black zombie, you know, pitch two cards in your graveyard. And then basically with this deck, because we have so much going on, it's very easily to get four card types. Very easily. And so what we're going to do on turn on the next turn is return to our creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield. And that creature is a black zombie in addition to its other creature colors and types. So that's the important part. That's the part of the text that I want you to read. That last sentence on the minus three. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. This is a wrath of God on steroids or a damnation on steroids because it's minus seven. Understand it comes in with a royalty of five. It's minus seven is destroy all non-zombie creatures. So think of a deck that is a control deck. Like I've beaten black white control, you know, with Gideon's and Ruinous Pass and Fatal Pushes and Grasp of Darkness and all that type of stuff. When they see Death's Majesty, they're like, oh my god, he's just going to keep on bringing the creature back. He's just going to keep on bringing it back. Of course I am. <laughs> and that's really, it just wears people down in the late game. Um, you know, it really does. Versus control decks, Planeswalkers are brilliant because you're, they kill a token, you produce another one. And if you pitch something good in your graveyard, you just take it and put it into play, you know? And you can still cast cards out of your hand. You can still play the black counters. So you're still dropping Constrictors, Gearhawks, Rishkars, Catacomb Sifters, um, Tireless Trackers. You know, you're doing all those things, and they still have to worry about this stuff. So it's really good versus control. And so this might look like a token deck, but it's really, really not. In response to this... We're running one of Kalidus, or Kalidus. Now, you know, I just think it's a really good creature. It's, again, two colorless and two blacks, so really good for multicolor. I try to stay away from the three blacks or the three greens, of because that's really hard. Um, so Kalidus, um, realistically, just it's a really good card. I mean, you should run one of it. It's a legendary creature. I do run, run of, one of this. One of the most undervalued cards in standard, along with Ob Nixless. Everybody says, well, Ob Nixless. So what is Ob Nixless? You guys know this Planeswalker, right? Three colorless, two black, and not this card. But it comes into play. It's another five drop that everybody's like, oh, 
it's undervalued. It's plus one ability is draw a card and lose one life. So card advantage again with Tileless Tracker and, and also minus three ability destroy target creature. Just phenomenal. It's so much utility. You have a murder plus a draw card. Well, with Glint, this is very easy. Turn two, if you're not doing Constrictor, this is very easy. Um, you run four of these in this deck, and I, I recommend running four and not cheaping out on running three. And um, so, whenever Glint Sleeve enters the battlefield or attacks, you get an energy counter. Okay, you know, so pretty good. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay two. If you do, you draw a card and lose one life. Again, we're not so much concerned about losing life in this deck. This deck is so pro-attacking, and it's got so much defense in the deck, and so much versatility. We're not worried about losing a life here. We're actually worried about taking a life, which doesn't make sense, because that just, in real life, that's not what you want to do. But this is kind of like a deck that's really aggressive, can be very defensive, works versus control, Verse, works versus aggressive decks. It actually, pound for pound, can beat aggressive decks. I've seen the aggressive human creature decks, you know, where people discard a card and they get a 4-3 creature on turn 2. I destroy all those decks. This deck will destroy the human, the white, red decks. It just destroys it because it just does. It's so much beefier and acceleratingly fast. This is a very fast deck. But it can also be very, very slow in the way that I have it set up as well. It depends on what side of the deck that you draw. You can draw Planeswalkers. You know, there's times where I've drawn Liliana of the Last Hope, Nisa, and Death's Majesty, and then I have Fatal Pushes in my hand. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to keep this hand, because that's pretty cool. So this card really helps you. It's Menace, so, you know, it's hard to block. And you get the draw, you know, and you, put, you have four of these. And so I've played many games where I've started off with two Glints. Basically on the field. And with Constrictor, you know, Constrictor is actually slightly better in um, in regards to hardening scales is that if you get an energy counter, you get two of them with Constrictor. So Constrictor is not the heart of the deck, but it's like the arteries of the deck. Okay? But you can totally, like somebody, I actually had do Lost Legacy on my Constrictors, and I still beat the crap out of them, okay? This deck has really, really versatility, and it's really, really good for the reasons aforementioned. We're going to run four of these, of course. You know, and why not? Now, what really helps this deck, too, is I'm going to get to the Cyborg, and this is what screws with Gearhulk. What people need to pay attention to is you see a lot of these Torrential Gearhulk decks. They're green, blue, control, with Ceaseless Hunger, and Gearhulks. They tend to want to counter your crap, and take control of the game and beat you down with a Gearhawk. Our sideboard is built exactly for that. What you don't realize is that Gearhawk is an artifact creature. It is an artifact. You can kill it as an artifact as such. So you simply take out your fatal pushes, and we'll, I'll show you the sideboard. But why not? We have to make this a 60-card standard deck in Draina. I mean, why not? You know, um, we get all those tokens out. You know, whenever deals combat damage, again, Synergy with the deck, plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. That's amazing. Why? This car is so undervalued, I don't even know where to start. A 2-3 flyer, first off, with a first strike, gives you block ability. It, get, it keeps you out of fatal push range, you know, initially, unless they sacrifice something. It's out of shock range. So, and again, if they use the energy to, to, to kill your creature, they have to use all three energy counters. So, again... Brings you that utility, and again, brings you just that extra oomph in the deck. I've won games alone with Draina. It, they're focusing on so, oh, they're focusing on the Planeswalkers, they're focusing on the Gearhulks, they're focusing on the Constrictors, they're focusing on the Tiles Trackers, they're focusing on the Tokens, and they forget there's good old Draina. The, the little vampire that never lets you down. Of course, we're only going to be running one of this, and that is really it. We don't want to run a bunch of legendary creatures. Of course, the main deck, we're going to put in Murder. It's instant speed that gives us, it destroys target creature. So, there's nothing more that needs to be said about that. Um, it doesn't help for Seize's Hunger, but again, um, really good card. Just play it. So, we're going to run one of Murder. And if you have the money in the budget for this deck, we're going to run uh, two Liliana the Last Hope. But you can get away with one. If you're not going to run Liliana the Last Hope, I recommend trying to run maybe... Um, we're running two Nisas in this deck and two Liliana's the Last Hope. 
And so, and we're running one Obnisless, and we're running two Liana's Majesties. I know it sounds like a lot of planewalkers, planeswalkers, but they're actually just as good as running, instead of running a bunch of Grasp of Darkness, these serves as utility. But if I were not running Liana Last Hope, I would put Grass of Darkness in the slot. Um, so what this does is, do I need to do it? But anyway, up to one target creature gets minus two, minus one until end of your turn. You know what's so funny about this combo, too, that people don't pay attention to? You attack with a creature, like a 2-3 creature, so like a Catacomb Sifter. You attack with that, and somebody with a 3-4 will block it. You know, or, or excuse me, somebody with like a 2-3 will block it. Another 2-3 blocking it, and they're like, why did he attack? Then you drop this baby down, and then you minus two, minus one, then the creature dies. So they don't see it coming. You know, like, why are they attacking with this creature? I'm just, and you can see hesitation, too. You can see the hesitation on the other side of the screen. They're like, I just imagine thinking, why is he attacking with a creature that I can just block? Well, you know, we're going to give it minus two, minus one. This kills a lot of uh, quick decks, you know. So a lot of creatures now are, like, three, one creatures, two, one creatures, four, one creatures. We just kill them. It just We just get rid of them. And also, too, again, it gives you a great ability. Unlike Liliana's Death's Majesty, you put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, so that's the same, but it doesn't come to the battlefield. It returns to your hand, but that's actually pretty cool in some aspects. So that gives you utility, and this has, like, one of the best end games. Um, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of your end step, create X22 Black Zombie Creature Tokens, where X is 2 plus the number of zombies you control. So basically... You're going to control two zombies, then you can, you know, it's just going to multiply. It's just unstoppable at that point. Okay, finally, we're running two of Tyler's Tracker, which is, again, two colorless and one green. Notice the, the two colorless, three colorless themes that we're running here. Okay, very important. We're running two Tyler's Trackers, and this is very debatable. Again, if you're not running Liliana, The Last Hope, um, I hope that you're running Death's Majesty, but if you're not... Liliana the Last Hope, I understand. Listen, I got Liliana the Last Hope when she was un when she was underpriced. I mean, I got her before she blew up into the insane price range that she's at now, so I get it. And I, I got Nisa when Nisa, the Planeswalker, was six bucks. See, the reason, and I want you to start understanding the strategy behind. If you understand the strategy behind Magic, if a card has versatility, it's going to go up in price. Like, look at Heart of Kieran. He's got versatility. You can play that in any deck. Well, the price skyrockets. Look at Force of Will. You can play that in any deck that runs blue in it. Look at Dark Ritual, if it was actually not banned. You can play that in anything that runs black. You know, these cards will go up in value if they don't get banned. All right, so time has told you that. So time has told you that, but Tyler's Tracker is telling you this. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you investigate. No, and whenever you sacrifice a clue, you get a plus one, plus one counter. Again, sticking with some of the theme on Tyler's Tracker. So, you get draw ability again. So what are we seeing? Energy to draw cards, Planeswalker to draw cards, Planeswalkers that give us counters through Nisa, you know, Planeswalkers that help destroy creatures. So there's versatility. We're not just running Grasp of Darkness and it's a one-trick pony. Grasp of Darkness is great, don't get me wrong. It's minus four, minus four. It kills almost anything in standard right now besides Torrential Gearhulk, and, you know, you, of course you can't kill Sealess Hunger, you know, Ulamog. But, why not run something that gives you versatility, that can create an end game, that can protect itself, and destroy creatures at the same time? That's why Obnixilis, feel free to run that. Feel free to run one of, two of that. I run one of, just because I'm running Liliana Last Hope. But Tyler's Tracker, again, gives us card advantage. Again, with Glint Sleeves, um, the Glint Sleeve that you've seen, the 2-1 Menace card. You know, that gives us draw ability. We can draw from opposite Nick's list. You know, so we're drawing cards constantly. Great card advantage, great versus control, because it feels like on the opponent that we're dropping a million creatures when we're actually not. There's only... Now, there's only 23 creatures in this deck. But don't let the 23 cards in this deck, creature cards in this deck, fool you. Because... This deck can produce so many more creatures. Liliana's Death's Majesty creates 2-2 zombie creatures, brings creatures back, so that's a surplus in creatures. Catacomb Sifter, when it comes into play, creates a 1-1 Colorless Eldrazi, so again, creating more creatures. 
Nisa, which we're running two of. Nisa, voice of Zendikar. Create a 1-0 plant token. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Think about that for a second. Think about running that snake, that constrictor. Turn two, and forget about Rishnar. Rishkar? Yeah, forget about that. Turn three, dropping voice of Zendikar. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Like, boom, instant end game, catches your opponent. I mean, this is like a crusade for your own creatures on steroids with Constrictor. And it, it has a game where you gain seven life and draw X cards. So again, we're drawing cards. We're not worrying about life totals at this point. So the deck is very synergistic, as you can see. It relies on energy counters. It can beat you through many different ways. We have Menace, Trample, and oh yeah, I forgot the one card that most people do not include, and we're including that in this deck. And we finally have a great spot. I think one of the best gods in the format, undervalued. It was 12 bucks. It was overinflated valued on um, MTG Online. And then basically, um, when we look at this, it's now down to roughly about 6 bucks and about 50 cents. But again, Ronus, the indomitable. Two colorless, again, you notice the theme here? Two colorless, three colorless, only one of or two of a certain color. Perfect card. Death Touch Indestructible. In this deck, we don't have to worry about this. Ronis, the Indomitable, can't attack or block unless you control another creature with four power four or greater. In this deck, we do, ha do not have to worry about that one bit whatsoever. Here's the beauty of it. Another target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains trample to end turn. How many times have you had a big beast, but you like they can block with a 1-1? One, one? I mean, I see people with big beasts, and I'm blocking with 0-1 plant tokens. I'm like, okay, yeah, you can attack me all day long. And then, you know, I'll just drop a card and swing on you and just, you know... How many times have you seen that? Well, you're going to give these cards trample. So on top of the Gearhulk having trample itself, you are going to be able to give other creatures trample. Also, this is a great blocker. It's great versus destruction. And we're going to have no problem activating this. I run one of this, but I leave room for other things. I also run three Fatal Pushes. So here's the main deck game, is Fatal Push. Destroy target creature if it has a mana cost of two or less. So this really stops the aggro. You know, it really stops the quick things, the human creature things. It kills... Uh, it kills, you know, it kills Khan pretty good, you know. Um, but here's the thing. We can actually, th this deck has so much utility in it that you're going to see Revolt in this deck a lot. You can sacrifice clues from Tireless Tracker. You can actually sacrifice the Aldrazi tokens created by uh, Catacomb Sifter. There's a lot of things that you can do, and people are going to kill creatures in, your, in this deck anyway. They're just going to kill things. Things will die. And Fatal Push gives you great, the revolt on this is huge, and it's going to be used more than probably almost any other deck that you'll see, especially this strong with creatures. So great utility, again, with Fatal Push. Now we're going to run Transverse the Wild, two of these. Um, sorcery is speed, but search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Now we're running 23 lands, and this seems to be really good. Even though you look at this deck and you're like, wow, there's some beast in this deck. But understand... The mana that you're going to get from Rishnar, all the counters that you're adding, and understand anything with a counter on it, you can tap for a green if Rishnar is out. So we're getting a lot of cards, but just to help with the deck. But also, people will be killing our cards, and because we have so many different types of cards in here, having four cards in your graveyard is different types is not going to be insane for Delirium to be activated. And that's the reason why we have that big spider in our deck. If there are four more card types among, you know, in your graveyard, instead you can search for, for a library for a creature or land card. So basically, searching for a creature card in this deck is like a demonic tutor, except without being able to search for planeswalkers. But you're getting a standard, modern-day demonic tutor for basically one green mana. And, you know, like I said, I, I admit that this is in the deck because in online... You know, you can get, quote-unquote, mana screwed. Again, comment on what you think about that. But, you know, you can have a great hand. How many times have you had a great hand, and you're like, crap. So you can start off with, like, say, Liliana, The Last Hope, you know, 
um, the Constrictor in your hand, Nisa in your hand, and you're like, but I have green mana. Well, this takes care of that. You can search for a swamp, put it in your hand, or in the late game, just, you know, search for a big beast, put it on the board, or if you can't get your Constrictor, you can fish for it. And this deck doesn't really revolve around Constrictor. The weakness of the original black-green token deck is killing the Constrictor and taking care of the Gearhawks. I've had people kill my Constrictors, lost Legacy my Gearhawks, and I still win the game with my Planeswalkers. And that's why it's so important to incorporate Planeswalkers in this deck. So this is why this deck is huge in strength, huge in versatility, and is great in defense, in very offensive deck. This deck wins way more than 60% of the time. I actually have the stats written down. I'll have to check them out. I'll make an update video. What makes this deck even better is a sideboard ability. Let's look at the sideboards. 